Demis. Welcome to Demis Town, Demises. <laughs> I'm gonna try your coffee first. Oh my god. <laughs> Not bad. Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we've got a pretty cool video where we're gonna be talking about a collaboration that I'm doing with Sean. Sean! Is it your first collab? Yeah, so... Yes! This is forever <laughs> gonna be my claim to fame. <laughs> Her Instagram is for a little peach, we'll put it down here. What do you do and um, tell me a bit about yourself. Okay, um, I'm an illustrator. So that basically means that I get to draw for a living. It's pretty awesome. I'm from Sydney, like Demis. And I don't know what else to say about myself. I'll show some of sounds cool like work this. on the, boom, on the boom, screen. Boom, 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 yeah, boom, boom. everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, all right. A few weeks or months ago, mm -hmm. Adobe sort of was asking around who out of the ambassadors would like to collab with each other. Yes. And we've been talking about collaborating with each other for a while and I guess that's how this collaboration came about. Yes. And I we think, specifically yeah. requested we would like to collab. <laughs> yep. And um, I think how it's super cool. How could they say cool. no? Sorry. No, no, of course. No, I think, I think it's super cool because we do such like different things. I'm a photographer and Sean's an illustrator yeah. and trying to make these two worlds combine into mm -hmm. one is, is super interesting yeah. to, to see what the end result will be. I think our work looks really different as well, even though there's similarities, which we've spoken about before. I feel like the similarities are like we take the world around us and make it a more surreal place. Yeah. Like my work lives in its own world and yours exists in the real world, but you kind of embellish it and make it look even better than it is. That's what I try to do, yes. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So I think that's that's the similarity we have. So to the naked eye, it might seem like a bit of a weird collab maybe. Yeah. Because our mediums and our styles are very different, especially the colors that we use. Although yeah. I have to say I'm liking blue right now. Yeah, blue is great. Uh-huh. I actually like oranges as well. Oranges. Are... Yeah, <laughs> We've affected yeah. each other. But anyway, so when we were talking about what we were going to make, we thought it would be cool to do two sort of separate pieces. Yeah. One that sort of lives on my feed mm -hmm. and one that lives on your feed. But yeah. at the same time, they both show that we've collaborated with each other and worked with each other. Yeah. To, and I think get... it's quite obvious because our mediums are so different. Yeah. I can put the final two images here and two pieces of work right now. Wow. So and then um, for me, the first one, the Opera House one, mm -hmm. I'm always super inspired by changing things and making something different and editing something from day to night in one image like showing time through one image is always something I wanted to explore I yeah. always like to explore and yeah so I thought having that watercolor as a background would be really cool and we can emulate the real sky with watercolor and so sort of that's how we came to that idea yeah and that's like um, that was your idea as well I was gonna do everything digitally so I was so happy that you suggested that because watercolor is like my favorite mm. But I don't get to do it as much anymore, so I was so stoked that you said I don't even know why I didn't think to do that. No, I mean, when I think of your work, it's always like, you know, really awesome gradients and patterns and night stuff and planets and stuff. And I do a lot of night photography, so yeah. that's sort of what I was leaning towards when I thought about collaborating with yeah. you. Yeah, I think that was the interesting thing because I've never really collabed before. Like, I've done small ones, but it wasn't really thoughtful. Yeah. Like, it yeah. wasn't like back and forth. We really talked about it. It was like, oh, here's the idea. You make this, I make this. Yeah. Whereas you and I were like, what do you think of this? What do you think of this? Yeah. So it was really like quite fluid and very back and forth. Yeah. I really like that. To begin this piece of work, I started by visiting Milson's Point and shooting a day to night time lapse. I didn't have to shoot a time lapse, but I just thought might as well use my time yeah, of course. properly. And so I, I needed a day shot and a night shot from one spot. So I thought I'd just shoot a time lapse. No, I think that's cool. And yeah, so I, I took it home and let's just go straight into Lightroom and I'll show you how I edit this. And then we can go back and forth between Lightroom and Sean, Lightroom and Sean. Wait, Lightroom, it sounds like you're a computer program. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate it. <laughs> Between Lightroom Photoshop and then Sean's watercolor process and then yeah. our, our back and forth together to see how we come up with this piece of work. Yeah. Okay. Okay, cool. So let's jump into Adobe Lightroom and start by color grading both the night and the day images. I've already picked one of the first and one of the last frames from the time-lapse sequence. I'm going to be doing a more in-depth Lightroom tutorial in a separate video very soon. So that's why we're speeding through this part of the edit. But basically, the aim for this initial Lightroom part is to color grade these two base images how you would normally edit a sunset and a night shot. So now we've completed the first color grade in Lightroom, you want to select both the images and then right click and select edit in and then click open as layers in Photoshop. Both photos should now be open in Photoshop as two separate layers. The first thing we're going to do is to clean all the dirty lens dust from the night image sky. To do this, we're going to use the spot healing brush tool and rub over each speck. You can adjust the size of the brush depending on the size of the speck by right clicking on the image. Even though we're going to be replacing the sky later on with a watercolor texture from Sean, I thought I would do this step anyway, just in case we decide to make the watercolor texture slightly transparent. And yes, I've already cleaned my sensor now, it should never be that dirty in the first place. 
Next, you want to crop the image to 4x5 ratio for Instagram. You want to use the rule of thirds guidelines from the crop tool to help you compose your image. In this case, I've placed the base of the opera house on the lower third line. You also want to make sure that the delete crop pixels button at the top is turned off so that you can keep readjusting your crop until you're fully satisfied with the composition. Next, we're going to work on the day to night transition. First, apply a layer mask on the top layer. In this case, the day shot. Then drag a guideline from the left ruler until it snaps to the halfway point. Use the marquee tool to make a selection of the right half of the image. The box should snap to the grid line you've just made. Then you want to paint this whole selection black onto the layer mask using the paint bucket tool. This will reveal the night shot below and because this was shot on a tripod with the exact same frame, the images should line up perfectly. To make the transition more seamless, I use the paintbrush tool with the medium size and zero hardness to paint black up and down the center line. Hold the shift key to make sure you paint in a straight line vertically. If it's not looking right at first, you can change the paintbrush to white and adjust the size of the brush to paint the other side. Keep experimenting by painting black and white along either side of the center line until you're happy with the transition. Next, I dropped in Shan's watercolor sky into the file. Change the opacity to 50% so you can see what's below it and use the free transform tool to adjust the position and the size of this background. Once you're happy with the positioning, add a layer mask to this layer. Then hide the layer by clicking the eye icon and select the day opera house image layer. Use the magic wand tool to select the sky. This will roughly select all the sky around the buildings since the sky is mostly the same color. Then use the polygonal lasso tool to tidy up the selection. Hold shift to add to the selection or hold alt to minus the selection. Next, right click the selection and click select inverse. Then paint the selection black onto the layer mask for the watercolor layer. This is usually the technique I use to do my sky replacements if I need to replace the sky in one of my images for something else. I then use the spot healing brush tool again to tidy up a few little spots in Sean's watercolor texture. Next, I use the color balance tool to start tweaking the colors of the background and also the foreground layers too. The aim here is to try to match the colors as best as possible by eye. You want to take your time with this and try to get the colors to match correctly. I then realized that adjusting the colors overall was not giving me the control I wanted since each half of the image is so different in color. So I selected the left half using the marquee tool and copied this onto its own layer. To do this, right click the selection and click layer via copy. Now I'm able to adjust the colors again using the color balance tool with more control. To get rid of the sharp edge in the middle, use the eraser tool with hardness 0 on this new layer to erase the hard transition. And then also tweak the colors for the blue side by using the layer underneath. Next we're going to create the reflection. First you want to compile everything you've done so far into its own layer. So to do this, hit Ctrl Alt Shift E and a new layer should appear at the top with everything you've done so far combined into one layer. Then use the marquee tool to select just the top part of the image, everything above the water. And right click and select layer via copy. Hit Ctrl or Command T to free transform this layer and right click and click flip vertical to flip the image upside down. Then you want to move this into position. To get some water texture back into the image, click the daytime opera house photo layer and create a copy of just the water part from this image. Next, go to image adjustments hue saturation and push the saturation all the way down. You also want to adjust your levels to push the white a little bit brighter. Then use the blending option overlay for this layer and adjust the opacity to about 75%. The next step is to make the reflection a little bit blurry, just to make it look more realistic. To do this, select the Opera House Reflection layer, then hit Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and I set it to about 25 pixels. I then adjusted the color balance and decreased the brightness of this layer to make the reflection look more believable. I then exported this image at its current state and sent it to Shan to see what she thinks of this initial edit.
So now we're back in Photoshop. Let's drag in the new watercolour background that Chart has sent. Adjust the positioning of it by using the free transform tool. In this case, I also stretched it vertically as I thought it looked better. Next, copy the layer mask from the old background onto the new background. To do this, hold Ctrl Command and Alt together while dragging the layer mask between the two layers. I actually preferred the colours and gradients of the previous watercolour background better, so I thought I would just use the smoother transition in the middle and get rid of either side of it. To do this, just paint black onto the layer mask with a large size brush. You want to make sure you leave the transition part though. Next, tweak the colours a little bit using the colour balance tool so it matches better with the previous background. Then I tidied up the background a little bit by using the fill content aware tool to patch up the part I thought could look better. Hit save and the file should automatically jump back and update in Adobe Lightroom. I then did another color gradient Lightroom which included two graduated filters coming in from the left and the right to emphasize the bright and the dark parts more. Finally I exported this and sent it back to Sean so she can add the finishing touches. So now we're back in Photoshop again and I've dropped in the latest version from Sean with the sky details. I felt that the reflection could be a bit better so I decided to redo it. I followed the same steps as before but this time I added a bit of horizontal motion blur. To do this, click the reflection layer then go to filter, blur, motion blur. I made the angle 0 and distance 100 pixels. I also made the overlay layer more transparent at 50% opacity instead of 75% opacity. Next, I felt that the birds were just slightly too low and too close to the opera house, so I decided to move it up a little bit. I used the rule of thirds guidelines to help me position it. To get these guidelines, click view, new guide layout and make your column and row numbers 3 each. Then you want to select the birds, right click and click layer via copy and move them up into position. And then I selected all the yellow by using the magic wand tool and then deleting the background. And finally, I deleted the old birds by selecting them, right clicking, and clicking fill, and content aware. The last step is to save and take it back to Lightroom for a few minor colour adjustments. And the edit is complete. Let's take a look at the before, and the after. So I hope you found that tutorial useful and saw the process going back and forth between Sean and I. I guess now I want to talk about what makes a good collab and why this collaboration was quite successful, I think. I think it was successful too. Yeah. So I was scared. Yeah. So what do you think makes a good collab? Um, well, this is probably the first one that's been very successful for me. The other ones that I've done, it's kind of been like very separate processes. And also the other experience that I had was at uni where it was just like terrible experience. Right. So this was like, oh, pleasantly surprised. I thought we weren't going to be friends afterwards, you know? Um, but I think what makes a successful collab is thinking about what the other person can bring, not just being like, here's your work, here's my work, let's smush it together. Yeah. Like, let's talk about what is similar with our work, what do we want to achieve with our work, like, um, what we want to highlight in each other's work, yeah. and also what are our strengths. Yeah. That's important, because you want to highlight the other person so that your audience can kind of appreciate what the other person's doing without even knowing who they are. Yeah, I think a collaboration should be obviously mutually beneficial yeah. for the both of us and so like I think working with Sean and then like bringing her audience in to, to show a little bit of photography and then bringing my audience in to show a little bit of like watercolor illustration it's sort of like 
meshing two worlds and, yeah. and coming together into one really it's cool exciting. world. It's exciting. I'm excited to see what happens. Yeah, I think I think it'll be really cool. And um, yeah, I guess obviously finding the right person is tip number one. Yeah. Tip number two would be making it mutually beneficial. Yeah, kind of considering what the other person thinks after you've done the work. So like, for example, when I did the first gradient, you were like, oh, maybe let's try this. And I was yeah. happy to do that because I wanted to make something that you were proud yeah. of. Yeah. I think because we had chosen each other and we knew each other before, yeah. I really wanted you to be happy with the end result. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas if it was a stranger and it was just kind of like, mm. Yeah, I think communication would be probably, yeah. one. that would be the the third tip to yeah. just have like really good communication with each other and like respect each other's work yeah exactly well. yeah because also when you're collaborating with someone that you don't think is passionate it's kind of like you want to take the reins with everything yeah but i knew that you are you're hard working and i've seen what you've done and i respect what you do so i was like it was a lot easier for me to like let you have control or like take your feedback on board like in a positive way yeah does that make sense like i'm fine with taking critique but sometimes when you're collaborating you're like Ugh. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But with you, I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm happy to yeah, do nah, that. Yeah, it's good, it's good. Definitely. I yeah. agree. I felt the same way. Mutually beneficial. Amazing. On top of this opera house work, Sean created a little stop motion animation. Yeah. Um, that she did, she drew frame by frame. Oh my god, it took so long. Um, I guess the process of that will be shown on your video yeah. in the future. Yeah, in, in not future. straight away, because yeah. I'm very slow, I'm not as efficient as Demis, but you will see it. Yeah, so go check out her channel. Thanks, um, she makes really cool vlogs and art. Thanks. And yeah, anything you want to plug? Anything you want to plug? Um, Maybe like, where can people find you? Oh, yeah. Or what, what things have you got going on? If you look up Fairy Little Peach, you'll probably be able to find me on the internet, like whatever social media you're on. <laughs> um, also, what am I doing right now? I'm doing work with Samsung right now, also working on my second book, That's which awesome. is exciting, which won't be out till next year, so I can't plug that. But yeah, I don't know. It doesn't matter. Just come find me on the internet yeah. and then you can see what I'm up to. But yeah, anyways, all her links will be in the description. Um, and yeah, if you like this... <gasps> like, subscribe. Yeah, that's it. I was about to, about to say that. If you like this video, um, like, comment, subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. Bye. <laughs>